this meeting, the Monroe County Solid Waste Management District, Thursday, January 16th. Uh, Mr. McGlasson, would you call the roll, please? Munson? Here. Thomas? Here. Giffen? Here. Hamilton? Pete Monsmith? Jones? Here. Swafford? Here. Beautiful. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, the first item on our agenda is election of officers. I'd like to make a motion to um, elect uh, Cheryl Munson as the chair of the board for 2020, uh, Isabel Piedmont-Smith as vice chair, and uh, Penny Giffins as secretary. I'll second that. And this is not a surprise to Isabel. I told her I was complaining. <laughs> she didn't object, so <laughs> it's not just something we do when she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get for not being here. Um, all right, any comments, any other nominations? Thank you all for your willingness to serve. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I'm gonna hand the meeting over to Ms. Munson. <clears throat> thank you. So thank you, Madam Former Chair. Uh, let's begin with the controller's report and payroll and claim and how uh, we'd like to have a motion on payroll and claims. I move approval of payroll and claims. Second. Ms. Hudson. Since the last meeting of December the 12th, we've had pre-approved claims of 330,432.41. Today I'm asking approval of 70,945.23 for a total of 401,377.64. Thank you. Any about the claims. And you had you had an email today, wasn't it? Yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Yesterday. Just because I read it today doesn't mean it was sent yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if there's no if there are no no discussion, we will have an approval. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Let's move on and have a presentation on cash flow, Ms. Hudson. Okay, our operating balance is at 2,340,545.39. Our post closure, or our closure bond debt is at 162,788.97. The capital is at 45,413.60. And the landfill post closure is at 750,918.53. Uh, questions for Ms. Hudson about that? None. All right. This is this is moving right along. Our next uh, agenda item is a resolution on uh, the board of directors meeting schedule, and I'm a little hesitant because we don't have two of our directors here. Um, and would. Uh, would you read the resolution, please, and offer a motion? Hold on. Hold I'm on. Not, I'm not here yet. We're getting there. We're moving paper. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, um, I thought I had it, it open I've and I lost it. it. Right here. Here I am. Do you have it? All right, I uh, move approval of resolution 2020-01. Now therefore the district board of directors hereby resolves and establishes the following scheduled meetings for the year 2020. Board meetings will be held on uh, monthly on the second Thursday of the month at 4 p.m. All meetings will be held in the Nat Hill meeting room uh, in the Monroe County Courthouse unless otherwise advertised. Thank you. May I have a second please? Second. Thanks. All right. So, is there any discussion about um, our meeting dates? I will be late in the spring, and I have no idea what's going to happen in the fall, but I apologize for that. If I may? Uh, yes. Uh, absent any discussion uh, with the board or amongst the board, I, I put this together based on historical meeting schedule, and it certainly uh, would be open to be uh, amended and approved as amended if that fits. Uh, the director's uh, schedule. So I think um, 
most people are, are used to this meeting time. So, uh, is there any questions or comments from the board? Uh, any comments from the public on our meeting schedule? Uh, the staff, are you happy with it? Then, then let's have a vote, please. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Um, we will have a roll call vote, please. Swampert? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Giffins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Munson? Yes. Motion passed. That's why there's two asterisks. Now I remember. <clears throat> okay, next we'll uh, discuss annual appointments to the Citizens Advisory Committee. Hello, Ms. Piedmont Smith. Will you show that she has joined us? And we want to say congratulations on your vice chair position. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're moving right along. We're on item. We're on item four. <laughs> we are just on the clip. <clears throat> We're doing annual appointments to the Citizens Advisory Committee. Okay. And Mr. McGlasson, would you like to discuss this for us? Certainly. Uh, certainly. Uh, this uh, is just, it's an annual housekeeping measure. Um, the uh, resolution 90-1 that established the CAC required uh, or well made the the, uh, the term to serve one year term. So uh, the CAC membership has to be appointed annually by the board. Uh, you have um, seven of the eight current members uh, expressed an interest uh, in continuing to serve uh, in 2020. You have those names uh, listed on the memo, uh, page 24 of your packet uh, would, be, would be up uh, for appointment by the board if they so choose. Uh, we, uh, I just, uh, at this time, don't have any new interest, uh, but uh, take this opportunity to uh, let the public be aware that we, we can take up to 15 members uh, on the CAC, and we are certainly always interested uh, in uh, you know, bringing on new members that have an interest in waste management, waste reduction issues, or environmental issues uh, to serve our CAC. Um, I have a question. Can, can the uh, group still meet if, if they uh, do not have a quorum? Uh, they, they can. Um, but they can't approve minutes. They, they can't, can't approve right? minutes. Uh, okay. you know, they don't have a whole lot of official action uh, generally that they take, but yeah, they, they, mm -hmm. and they have that absolute okay. quorum and just not taking any votes for minute okay. approval or anything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, this requires a motion for approval, does it not? Uh, yes, we need a motion from a member of the board uh, to appoint one, up one, between one and seven of, of the members up for reappointment uh, if the board wishes to have any of these members continue to serve. I move that we approve reappointment of all seven members of the CAC. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the board? I'm really pleased to see Ryan Conway be involved this way. Uh, Ryan Conway is serving as waste industry representative, so that's very good. <clears throat> we have another waste industry representative in Ms. Lauren Cott, and I think I will read the other names. <clears throat> John Arnold. Rondi Cox, Lily Kineland, Nelson Schaefer, and Paul White. And just to clarify, I believe Ryan Conway is with, um, oh, their company keeps changing names, but the composting folks, mm -hmm. Green Camino. Green Camino, uh, Fable Farms, Earth, Earth Keepers Earth is Keepers. the umbrella name. There we go. And yeah. then um, Lauren Cott is with Republic Services, I believe. Oh, right. Rumkey. Rumkey. Oh. Rumkey. So we do not have anybody from Republic on the uh, we just paid. And, 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 ask, um, <laughs> and uh, I think I think part of the, the issue with them uh, is the people they would want to serve 
uh, and then the, uh, the statute has a residency requirement. So you, you have to live, reside in the county uh, of the, uh, or, or in a county of the district uh, of the CAC here in 20%. Well, before we vote, let me ask if there's public comment. Thank you. So, and before we vote, I would like to comment that, um, to offer uh, thank you to all the members who have, have agreed to serve for another term. And to the public, if you have interest in recycling and handling uh, waste in our county, I would urge you to contact the district, learn more about the district on the website, or contact any members of the board to learn more. We would like to expand the, the Citizens Advisory Committee, and we'd be very happy to have your, your application. So let's, let's have a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we'll move on to department reports and start with Mr. McGlasson. Uh, yeah, I, I just uh, would point out to you uh, in the packet you have um, three um, impact reports covering two week periods uh, from Green Camino regarding the, uh, the food waste collection at the, at the Bethel Lane site. Um, also would uh, uh, make the board aware of the Green Camino has expressed an interest in looking at moving forward with expanding that uh, service uh, to our other facilities. So uh, we'll, we'll begin looking at that and uh, uh, working with item on the registration amendment to make sure that would be acceptable to them uh, at those other facilities as well. And uh, uh, look at moving that process forward and hopefully uh, you know, bring back to the board a, a request to uh, extend that service to the other sites uh, in the near future. Um, and outside of my report, uh, just uh, as I'm sure that we're all aware, uh, the legislature is in session again. Um, and uh, at this point, or I guess, uh, bill filing deadline was on the 9th, so uh, all bills that would be uh, taken or be taken under advisement or heard for this session uh, have been filed. Uh, there are no, no bills that have been filed uh, that directly deal with solid waste districts uh, at, at this time. Uh, always possible that uh, you know, an amendment or something could be attached to a bill as it moves through that may have a direct impact on districts, but uh, no, no bills that are, are, are directly uh, impacting or, or looking at solid waste districts. Uh, as usual, there's a number of bills uh, that deal with uh, potential changes to items, DLGF, SBOA, that will impact uh, most all uh, local government entities throughout the state, and uh, we'll be we're watching those. Um, uh, one of interest uh, that we're watching, Senate Bill 52 uh, would uh, require uh, any public improvement projects at a cost of uh, $150,000 or more would be required to pay prevailing wage. Um, I think that's historically something the district has always done with our major capital projects, but uh, you know, it is something that could potentially in increase the cost of, uh, of projects for uh, entities. Did you say $50,000 or more? $150,000. $150,000. Bill 52 uh, was that one. So, um, it's all that I have at this, at this time, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes. Um, Green Camino's numbers um, look consistent, but not very impressive. Um, so why would they be interested in expanding if there's only eight or nine subscribers? Uh, they've indicated to me that, uh, you know, they, uh, they have a, uh, they're curious, they, or they, and they, they, they have a belief that, uh, you know, just because of the demographics served by the various sites, that other sites might have more uh, participation than the Bethel Lane site. Uh, and who applied for the grant? For? For advertising, Green Caminos? Uh, the district did. Okay. Just, just so when do you hear that, about that? Uh, I believe February 24th is when they're okay. going to announce. Is that the one that I sent to you with the, it was the, um, it was community, it was community, community recycling. Okay, good. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. what, what is this about a grant? 
sorry, um, I missed something. Item, item has an annual grant program, community, uh, uh, community recycling grant, or something to that effect, and um, we've uh, we put in an application for that, uh, looking for some uh, additional funds to help us do promotion of the, of the food waste recovery program and, and hopefully uh, the expansion of that uh, to our other locations. When will we, and we'll hear about the grant um, in? The, the end of February. End of February. Is when, is when they'll notify uh, the applicants of whether or not they've received any grant funds. Okay, so thank you. I guess we'll hear next month or, or at the March meeting. Well, in the March board meeting, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be able to announce something on that. So uh, something from uh, your, your memo, uh, the compost bin and rain barrel program. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, that, we, that's something that we need to talk about um, at least in December, possibly uh, November as well, um, where we've uh, uh, gotten connected with a company called Brand Builders, and uh, they're de they're developing a website that uh, is in going through some final revisions, and we hope to have live soon uh, that would allow. Um, local residents to go online and, and purchase rain barrels, compost bins, uh, and related uh, accessories uh, at, uh, at discounted pricing uh, due to the, the volume that they're able to, uh, to purchase these in, uh, and then uh, planning to have a, uh, uh, all, of, all of the ordered items uh, would, would be delivered and have an event to distribute all of those on, on April the 18th uh, in, in conjunction, uh, <coughs> excuse me, with Earth Day. And that event would take place at the uh, uh, the solid 3400 South Walnut location uh, in the administration building, and uh, we will certainly, uh, again, like I said, hope to have the uh, the website to order uh, online live uh, in the very near future, and we will certainly uh, make announcements uh, to that effect when that goes live, and uh, hopefully get some people uh, get the materials they need to collect rainwater and do composting in their backyard. Looking forward to seeing the, the promotions on this. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. McGlasson? Yes, I have one. Um, the Comcast summary, um, this has been bugging me for a while now. I, I really don't know what it means when you say, like, television, here are some topics. Weather for all, here are some topics. But does that mean that, that there were commercials on those topics? and? Could we find out how many? And Correct. We, we, we have um, we we have for, for television and the premium digital. Um, we have about 40 30 second spots that over the years uh, we have re produced and recorded, and on a variety of topics. Um, but we only we only cycle a handful uh, of those through in, in a, a monthly or, or every two month uh, period. Uh, to try to focus the message in, uh, in, in for, for that advertising period. Uh, and we kind of do the same thing uh, with the, uh, the, the weather crawl that we have uh, and uh, with radio, where we have uh, a, a number of topics that we have uh, spots prepared for. Uh, we, only, we only run a small number of them at any given time to try to keep the message more focused. So when you list, for example, television, Food recovery, orange bag trash, electronics and recycling. Does that mean there was one commercial for each of these topics that was shown, or several commercials, or what? How do I interpret that? One, com one commercial related to food recovery that, that that ran numerous times, but we just had the one 30-second spot uh, that was to run in, in that in the month of December for all food recovery. Same thing for the orange bag, electronics and recycling. Four different ads run multiple times each. Right. Yeah. Okay, maybe you could just add a little bit of contextual language in your report so that it's more easy to understand. Do that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Giffen? Um, yes, has, has there been any pushback about increasing the price on the orange bags? Um, I, I, know that, I know that there was one um, Facebook comment that was made, uh, 
that I'm aware of, just, just the one. Um, um, I've not been made aware of, of anybody calling and complaining. Uh, I've, um, I have, I've had some discussions with some of the, uh, the manager and clerks at the store I buy my orange bags at, since they know where I work. Uh, and, they, and they say people ha have made comments uh, about the price increase, but uh, um, pr probably less than I anticipated. The feedback I'm getting is probably less than I would say I was anticipating. Thank you. Other questions, comments from the board? Okay, let's move on to Mr. Morgan's report, please. Uh, the only thing I really want to mention is that our Christmas tree wreath and um, collection program ended on the 11th of this month and hopefully by our next meeting I will have numbers as to uh, the volume of, of materials that we collected um, this year and I guess part of the end of last year because it started uh, I believe it was the 26th so the 26th through January the 11th. Thank you, Annette. Um, questions for Mr. Morgan for comment? So can, can, is there anything to report with your discussions uh, about glass recycling? You mentioned that there were discussions, but is there anything? There were discussions, but nothing of concrete nature at this point. It's just everybody, you know, Rumpke wants the glass, but there's a lot of logistics involved, and um, they're interested in more than just the district glass by far. They, they need more volume. Uh, for the economics to work out and also a location needs to be selected um, for the glass to be co-mingled at so that it could be shipped to their Dayton, Ohio location. So, wait, do, I'm trying to understand what you just said. So does that mean that, that they, cannot, they would not move forward without another um, collector in Bloomington also giving them their glass? Yeah, they would need multiple. Our waste is not enough for them. Right, that is correct. And, and it needs to be co-mingled because we're only doing four, five, six tons maybe maximum per box. And to ship that from Bloomington to Dayton, Ohio would just be completely cost prohibitive. So they're looking for other partners in the, in the area to make this work. And when you say co-mingled, what do you mean? In other words, we, we have several boxes that need to be put together to make enough volume of glass to put in a semi-trailer to, to transport. In this context, I always think of commingled as you know glass and cardboard and everything right. together. But of course, we don't want that. Uh, my my um, question is why uh, why they're the ones looking for someone else to support this. In other words, why are they looking for another supplier of waste glass? Why aren't we doing that? Well, they they approached us. They approached us for the meeting, and we granted the meeting and, and had a, a good talk. Mm -hmm. um, but the economics just aren't there yet. Right, but you said that, they're, that they are looking for someone else, obviously in the Bloomington area. So mm -hmm. why are they doing that? Why aren't we doing that? Um, I, I have reached out to the city and to IU previously, um, be before we actually had any discussions with Runke uh, about the possibility of centralizing uh, a glass location uh, to, to haul from. Have not received any interest from either of them. Well, that was previously. How long ago was that? Um, spring, summer. Last spring. Of 2019. A year ago. Okay, well, it seems to me that uh, since Rumpke approached our district, it would be <clears throat> a good time to reach out again. Certainly, yeah. And, I mean, and if both Rumpke is reaching out and we're reaching out, maybe. Okay, thank you. And, and actually, I'd be interested in knowing more about the details of what Rumpke uh, needs. Um, so if you would uh, follow up with uh, uh, a short memo, just giving us the numbers. And so we have some sense of, of, where this, of what happened in this discussion. Okay. So you mean what extra volume there is? Yeah, what volume. However they, however they measure it. They're, they're looking for 22 plus tons uh, semi-load to, to move to Dayton. 22 plus. 22 plus tons 
a little bonus in my trailer. Okay. And how much do we provide? Average. Our, our boxes will we'll say five tons, so we need to be able to take four of our boxes, dump them, load them back up into a semi trailer. So not quite. You would have to store all that. I mean, so that's why it's not feasible for just the district to do it, right? Because right. We don't that, have that was part of my original reach out to the city and IU was to see if one of them had. Um, a vacant area that would be suitable for all the local glass to be taken to and then loaded up into a larger container to whether it was going to Indianapolis or to Dayton or wherever to, you know, economies of scale on, on the shipping. Very, very, it would be very helpful. So. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. We'll be glad to, we'll be glad to learn more. So, other questions on Mr. Morgan's report? Or memo? Okay. So, thank you, Mr. Morgan. And you have uh, reports that you wish to cover, Ms. Mr. McGlasson, on the landfill? Uh, yeah, um, Mr. Polson is ill, uh, but uh, can, uh, you know, the, it, the, land, the landfill is, is still there, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> from my perspective. Uh, uh, th th things, are, things are looking pretty good. The treatment plant I is running. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, the, the, the weather, te the air temperature and the, the water temperature are, you know, are not optimal for treatment. So we're not able to, uh, uh, we're, I think we're doing about four cycles a day uh, right now, which would be you know, 16 plus thousand gallons a day uh, on the treatment. Uh, but unfortunately, it's, it's not cold enough to not rain. Uh, so we're still not keeping up with production, uh, so we are hauling, um, and uh, it's just kind of where things are right now, and, and hauling is part of the course this time of year. Anyway. Thank you. Questions for Mr. McGlasson or comments? No, so thank you for that. I expect uh, with the, the rain that we had, uh, certainly was enough rain to uh, keep the, the haulers uh, happy, but not good for us. Okay, well this brings us to public comment and we do have our um, very welcome uh, member of the public that we're always happy to see. Any comments? No comments today. Thank you. And now for comments from directors. I want to start on my left and my right. Thank you, Miss Miss Piedmont Smith. Well, I I apologize. I was late and I missed the um, the, the payroll and claims. Uh, uh -huh. I had some questions. Um, may I ask them now? Yeah. Um, we've well, already we've already approved. The I know. I understand. Yeah. It, yeah. They're not. They're not that type of question. It. It's more if we look at an overall view. Um. Well, let me try to orient myself here. Um, it looks like we ended the year with about $117,000 in operating that we didn't spend. Is that about right? I'm sorry, did you say it again? 117000 So, Ms. Peabun Smith, what page are you on? Yeah, I'm trying to find it, sorry. Okay. Okay, so um, page uh, 17 of the PDF. So it's the second page of um, the operating statement uh, spreadsheet. Okay, on the cash flow? Yeah. Uh, is that, yeah, I guess so. It just says subject operating. No, I'm. No, well, it's further a, down, it's the Excel type it's sheet. It's a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet on page 17. 
Okay, actually, I see that. I think I was misreading this. I was trying to figure out how much, um, so we can see in the revenues on page 16 that we took in um, $10,492 more than we expected. Um, and then uh, I was just looking at the, the subtotal that says, um, yeah, and but I see now that was only for the category other services and charges. But um, we ended the year in the positive for various categories of expenses. This is actually the deficit. So I'm sorry, where do you see that? At the bottom. Where the 10,000, that's actually a deficit? It's a de that's less than expected. Less than. Well, this is, this is what I find confusing because if you look at the numbers, so we um, budgeted two thousand six hundred twenty-five, two million two hundred. It's so small; it's hard two, to. Read. Two million six hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred thirty-two. Is that it? Yes, sir. Yes. So that's what we budgeted, and what we actually took in was two million six hundred thirty-eight thousand three hundred thirty-four. So that's a positive ten thousand four hundred ninety-two dollars. I think the column heading where it says budget last year to date actual is mm -hmm. misleading. Am I right that that's a positive? We got more money than we thought we would? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Re so revenues what? exceeded budget estimates, yes. Okay, so then when I go to the next page, um, is there a, a final total column for, oh, expense, okay, well, so way at the bottom, let me look here. Um, so total expenses, okay, we did have more expenses than yeah. we budgeted for, okay. I was looking at the wrong line. So we, we ended up um, spending, uh, 2.7 million and we had 2.4, is that right? Mm -hmm. Budgeted? Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that's sad. That's sad. Well, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll I, I misread it. I was looking at this other line, one of the subtotal lines where it looked really nice, but. We, we had 2.7 budgeted, we spent 2.4. Okay, well see, now that's good. So, um, Year-to-date expenditures, oh, I see. Year-to-date expenditures is 2.4 million. Year-to-date, and the budget was 2.7 million. So we had $340,000 that was not, that was budgeted but not spent. Is yeah, that correct? That's correct. So does that, we had a deficit of 117,000 when we created the budget for 2020. Correct. So is that now covered? Yes. Yeah, so and so it is that, good news. Of that three hundred forty thousand dollars, yeah, you know, the bulk of the deficit for two thousand nineteen year twelve was the there, we we budgeted a hundred thousand uh, dollars, you know, just for for composting something composting related, not really knowing where we were going to go after the Kessler report and uh, and all of that. So we wanted that money budgeted so we had the appropriations if the district was going to, you know, implement a program you know, do something with the facility. And so we just, we had that money there, but we didn't do anything. So that money was never spent. And I mean, and that's, that's $100,000 of that, of that money. But I just want to make sure I understand. We ended the year with $340,000 that we budgeted, but did not spend. Correct. Right. So. And those reversions. Those reversions will more than cover the deficit budget that we approved for 2020. Correct, and, and that's, yeah. That's and, great. I mean, that, and that, that the reversion just goes, goes back in, into our, our cash reserves, in, in essence. But it's in the same, it's in the operating fund. Right. Yes, it's in, we it's don't in have the a separate operating cash fund. Reserves. But, but that, that money is, is now no longer appropriate. Okay, but it could be if we needed to shore up our budget. Correct. We, yes, we could come and pursue an additional appropriation if we needed to uh, out of those cash reserves. Yes. 
So the 117,000 deficit is with respect to the revenue that we expect to come in during 2020. Is it? Okay. When we talked about the deficit in our uh, budget for 2020, that deficit uh, is measured against the revenue that we are expecting to come in Correct. during that year. Correct. And so um, it means we will be spending out of our savings if we need to uh, cover that 117,000. Still, it's a nice amount of savings. Yeah. It's and nice to have savings. You pointed out earlier, the, end of the revenues are estimates were usually pretty good, but we were, you know, we had $10,000 more come in this year than we budgeted. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but, you know, we were never off by a half million dollars by any means. Okay. <laughs> so the, um, on the first page of that spreadsheet, the revenues, um, the column that says budget less year-to-date actual, <clears throat> where the bottom figure is negative $10,492. That, that is confusing. Can we change that column heading so that we, when we see, an, when, we, when we're reflecting a positive number, you know, hey, we got more money than we thought, that, that should be a positive number, not a negative number. So if you want it to, if you want yeah, it to be okay. positive, it could be actual less budget. Yeah, we, there you we'll, go. We'll, flip it. We'll, yeah. we'll play with that. We'll re okay. we'll rehead that column and, and in a manner that would allow us to show uh, a positive where more came in and a negative where less came in. Thank you. So thanks for bringing that up to so everybody's clear on that. Thank you. So other questions or comments from the board? I have another one. Okay. So if we look at the cash flow summary, um, how did we end the year with more money in the operating budget than when we started? We could, well, and, and that, that comes back to what we were just talking about, where we had revenue, we had additional revenue came in that wasn't budgeted for, and we, you know, we had a $100,000 budget, but we also had $340,000 of reversions. So that's, so, that's so last year, you mean at the end of 2018, we had 340k reversions? Yeah. No, the, what you just saw was okay. for we had for two, 2019, we had 340 thousand dollars of appropriated money that was not spent. That reverted back and goes into those cash reserves, which yes. is the operating fund. But what I'm looking at is the cash flow summary report, where you have beginning balance January 2019, 2.1 million. At cash on hand as of December 31st, 2019, 2.34 million. So, you're, so is that partially because of reversions? I, I'm sorry, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a stupid question. That, that, that's the, that is the reversion. Um, the reversion for 2018. Right. Into and it, yeah, and it's, and like it was, we had $340,000, but you had a $100,000 deficit budget, so you should see about a $240,000 increase in your cash reserve. From January 1 to December 30th. Does that make sense? So we had about $340,000 in reversions at the end of 2018. No, so that, was, that was 2019. Your, January 2019, beginning balance is 2.1. Uh -huh. Year to date, as of December 31st, 2019, is 2.34. And that 240000 is the reversion accounting for the $100,000 deficit budget that went back in to the operating fund and added to our cash reserves. All right. I still don't get it, but it's just me apparently, so I'm not going to take up more time on that. When you're at your convenience, if you want to sit down and talk about it, we can certainly do that. Try to it, what I, it appears to me what I'm looking at here is only 2019 figures, so I don't see yeah, how the 2019 reversions can those, also be ref those reflected reversions, here. Those reversions happen on December 31st. 
We, that, that, that's why we, the, I mean, part of the reason that we quit paying claims every year before Christmas is so that we have that last week to two weeks of December to do all of this end of year stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we at, you know, our, our, our books for 2019 are closed at the end of business, December, 30, December 30th of 2019. So for 2019, we had a deficit budget as well? Yes. Okay. Like, like I think it's just the terminology that yeah, was like the, 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 the 2019 deficit budget was due to that $100,000 appropriation that the board wanted to just to have money appropriated for a composting food recovery that we weren't sure what we were going to do because we hadn't fully vetted the CESCO report when we had to put the budget together. So that was to be taken from reserves, but we didn't need to. Yes, but we didn't do anything, so... That money I think it was the term reversion that was throwing me off. Okay. <laughs> thank you. So thank you for your questions. So other questions or comments from the board? Well, that is it. We will meet again on the uh, third Thursday of second Thursday. Excuse me, the second Thursday of February. Um, same time, 4 p.m., in the same place here in the Nat New Hill room. And thank you all. We are adjourned. <laughs>